Okay, why am I making a podcast about body language in a family law context? Why is body language important when you're dealing with domestic violence, custody, divorce, all of these things? Why is it so important? And what are some good ways of reading body language? Okay, so let's go. Body language can reveal a lot about a person and their intentions, which is very important. By learning to read body language, you can not only spot a lie, but actually you can become a better conversationalist, which can be helpful in a family context. Like if you're, you know, co-parenting, that's a big one. Uh, or maybe you're trying to reconcile the marriage before it goes into something more serious, like a custody matter or a divorce or something like that. So maybe learning body language would not only help you understand their intentions, but also make you better communicator, maybe a little bit more empathetic. You understand their body language, you understand a little bit better maybe about where they're coming from, and that's valuable. So here are some body language cues and their meanings. When someone leans back or sticks their legs straight out, this is an indication that someone doesn't care about a conversation or the person they are having it with. It's as if they are saying, I want to get out of here. Another type of body language, when someone poses, preens, and shows him or herself, or herself off. In an effort to please a mate, someone begins to expose themselves in the most favorable light. This is exhibited more strongly in women, but applied to men as well. They straighten up to emphasize the chest, and women usually crosses her legs. Folded and lowered hands are a signal of a Attention and increased interest in the potential mate. So if someone folds and lowers their hands facing you, that could be a signal that they are trying to give you their attention and increased interest in the potential mate. Now, when someone crosses their arms and or legs, this is an indicator of disinterest that some experts recommend actually ending a meeting or conversation if you see one or more people lean back and cross their arms. Cross legs may be a danger sign as well. If you make a strong statement, then your conversation partner crosses their arms. That's an indication that they don't agree with you. So if you are talking to a group of people and people in the back start crossing their arms, okay, that you need to make you need to start making the presentation more interesting quick or um, if you're just in a one-on-one -on -one conversation with someone and they cross their arms again that that's an indication that they don't agree with you okay now when someone avoids making eye contact and you know I'm gonna have fun with this one especially as a like a family law attorney when they're avoiding making eye contact, if someone doesn't want to look at the person in front of them in the eyes, this could indicate that they're being dishonest. Practice liars make a point of looking in people's eyes. So don't make the mistake of equating eye contact with honesty itself. Now, when someone is making too much eye contact, uh, not looking someone in the eyes can make someone seem dishonest, but looking them in the eyes for too long is usually a sign of aggression. To make people feel comfortable and trusting, hold their gaze for just a second or two at a time, but, but do it often. Okay, now, when someone's pupils contract or dilate. The eyes are a mirror of the soul, as well as an excellent communication tool. They can read all the feelings and emotions of the interlocutor. Lovers stare into each other's eyes, subconsciously expecting to see them grow bigger. And this is a very... And this is very noticeable because the pupils can increase by four times in comparison with a calm state. By the way, if a person is angry, his eyes become like beads due to the maximum reduction of pupils. So 
That's interesting. Their pupils get smaller. That, that could actually mean anger. Interesting. Okay, now when someone swings from toe to heel. Let's, let's look at that carefully. When someone swings from toe to heel. Yes. So do not only children, but also in adults. This means that a person is very worried. You can often find adults swaying side to side, often paired with hands in their pockets. Um, when someone has their hands clasped, this is something people do when they feel stress. They are literally holding their own hand. Don't clasp your hands if you want to project self-assurance. So I, I could see that if you're in a courtroom and thing in a family courtroom and things aren't going in your direction or you're nervous about the hearing, I could see what, you know, you're clasping your hands, your own hand. That That's uh, if you're trying to look like the person who's self-assured and is in charge, don't do that. OK, when someone's hands are behind their back or in their pockets, this is a natural position many of us take unconsciously, but it can be seen as a sign that we have something to hide. Only consider this as a tell if someone displays this manner when they usually don't. Okay, next, when someone is making a shopping motion in the air. That's when many people do this when they feel, some, feel strongly about something or want to emphasize a point. But it can also be off-putting, almost as if you're shopping off your connection with the person you're, you're speaking with. Now, I, I kind of do that. I kind of wave my hand or arm a little bit, you know, and I don't want to say like shopping motion, but, you know, okay, we could, similar to a shopping motion, you're kind of moving your hand. It's like when you, I'm trying to explain a concept to a client, you know, maybe move my arm around a little bit, just let them know that, you know, I know what I'm talking about. I feel strongly about this course of action, blah, blah, blah. Okay. All right, this next one's gonna be a lot of fun. When someone touches their face, touching the face, especially the nose and mouth, is another one of those gestures that are unconsciously interpreted as a sign of deception or resistance if they are listening rather than speaking. So let's look at that carefully. When they're touching their face, especially the nose and the mouth, um, it is a, this gesture is a sign that they're that can be unconsciously interpreted as a sign of deception. So if someone's covering their nose or mouth, um, that could be mean deception. They're being deceptive. But if they maybe they're touching their nose or mouth while you're talking to them and they're listening to you, but it's like resistance, you know, it's weird. All right, another one I'm gonna have fun with. When someone nods too many times. Nodding is an essential part of communication and lets other people know you understand or agree with what they are saying, but doing it too many times can portray weakness. It can also be a sign of indifference, especially when paired with staring or fixating on an object. I do that a lot too sometimes, when I, maybe in the, in the courtroom. I, it's not really a weakness, it's like, I'm presenting my case, I'm making my arguments, and then the, the judge makes their ruling, and all you really can do is nod, because it's their ruling, and if you don't like it, well, you can file an appeal, or you just accept it, or, you know, be happy, because maybe it was a good ruling, but, you know, when they're, when they're, it's called the rendition, they're letting you know what their ruling is, or they're rendering that's, uh, yeah, you might, you might see my head nodding a little bit because I'm, I'm also, it shows respect. In my opinion, it shows respect. It's not really a weakness. Maybe if it's to someone you're intimidated by and you're, you're nodding your head. Yeah, definitely. Because maybe a bully comes to you and they're demanding something and you, all you can do is nod. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll take care of you. That kind of thing. But, uh, if it's towards an authority figure, uh, maybe you're, you know, you're trying to get out of a speeding ticket and, you know, you're agree with, uh, you know, their, or laugh at their funny jokes. Uh, I can see that it's, it's, uh, weakness. Yes. Maybe respect. Yes. Um, but nodding too many times can also mean indifference. Like, uh, maybe your spouse wants you to, 
go to a restaurant, you want to go to another restaurant, you know, argument, okay, which restaurant are we going to? And you finally just agree with them. You're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You just kind of go in and agree with them. It's like, it's like, it's just like, you just don't care. It's going to mean indifference. So nodding your head too many times can mean different things in different situations. Okay. Fidgeting. This one's interesting. When someone fidgets, people fidget when they're uncomfortable or bored. So that's the signal someone will send if they're bouncing their leg or constantly messing with their hair. Okay, when someone rubs the palm of their hand, it is believed that the hands broadcast what the head thinks. Rubbing the palms often expresses positive expectations of a person. The hope that he will succeed in something. In short, this is what we do when we think about the upcoming benefits. So I, I can see that maybe I'm telling somebody that they're, you know, about to get a, a lot of money, like a settlement or something and how we're going to do it. And they start rubbing their hands. Yeah. Uh, like, uh, like a, like a Scrooge or something. Um, I like or greedily rate rubbing their hands. Um, kind of like, uh, from that old show, uh, the Simpsons, uh, you had, uh, Homer Simpson's boss, Charles Montgomery Burns or Monty Burns. Uh, he was always seen like rubbing his hands together as if he had something dastardly planned and to his benefit. Okay. Another fun one. When someone hunches their shoulders, hunched or slumped shoulders are seen as a sign of unhappiness and they often are. People with clinical depression slump their shoulders more often than others. To project happiness and confidence, stand up straight, just like when mom nagged you to do. So work on that posture. You know, while you're listening to this audio, let's straighten that back right now and pop your shoulders back. You know, work on that posture. Uh, <clears throat> okay. When someone wraps their feet or ankles around the legs of a chair, like Clasp hands. This gesture signals that someone is uncomfortable and is uncomfortable and need they need to comfort themselves. Don't do this if you're trying to portray or project confidence. Okay. When next one is when someone makes themselves appear small. It's been said that people who practice expansive body language feel more confident and. Or, or secure as a result. The reverse is also true. True Body language that makes you seem small will make you feel small. Okay, another one. When someone makes overly grand gestures. Body language should be expansive to project confidence, but don't make the mistake of making great big gestures unless you're on stage speaking to an audience. In a non-performance context, it can be seen as arrogant. Yeah, so just just be careful how you do that. Um, you want to come off confident, but be careful about coming off as arrogant too. All right. Next one, when someone's feet is pointed the wrong way. Our feet often unconsciously express what we are really feeling. For example, by pointing away from the person we're speaking with, most people pay more attention to faces, but it's a good idea to keep your feet on message as well. I think there's um, a lot of truth in the plain meaning here. If you are talking to someone, you're speaking with them and you point your body in their direction, it, it's, it's shown as a you know sign of respect that you are giving them your attention and uh, well, also attention to their face. But if you're, turn your body away um, and not really looking at each other. That could be an expression of what you're, you're really, you know, really feeling. Best thing to do is face somebody, have your feet pointed towards them, kind of project your body, your chest towards them and just talk to them. You know, it, it, it'll, and also this we're work, not only are we helping to read someone's intentions by understanding body language, but also makes you just a better communicator. It seems like they, they feel like they, you are interested in their conversation. Okay. Next one. When someone pats their legs, 
This is a huge self-comforting gesture that will show how un uncomfortable someone is. One thing you can do, uh, go on YouTube and uh, type in, you know, the uh, Britney Spears on Dateline uh, interview where she was claiming her marriage was fine. And just that was just a few months before her divorce. During the interview, she couldn't stop touching her leg. That, you know, so she was touching her leg. She was very uncomfortable telling people that she's in a super happy marriage. And then, boom, a few months later, divorce. Okay. So maybe that's something you can talk to about your friends uh, who, you know, maybe detect if they're having their own problems. You, you know, you talk about their life, talk about their marriage, and then kind of keep an eye on where their where their legs are and if they start patting their legs uh, or touching their legs. That might. So if you talk about something like the weather, it's a good conversation, no big deal. And then you go into something more personal and then watch your hands to let to tell you if they're uncomfortable. And that could also be an indicator that something else is going on underneath. So if I'm doing a you know, consultation with a potentially new client, and I'm like, okay, so uh, has there been any infidelity? And um, they say, well, quick to say the other spouse is guilty of that. But then when I ask them if they did that, then, you know, they start touching their legs. So, yeah, you know, well, it's like, whatever. All right. This is an obvious one, and it happens all the time. When someone keeps glancing at a watch or phone, we think we can speak. We we think we can peek at the time, or or a text message without people noticing, but they always do. So don't shift your attention from the conversation unless you absolutely have to. If so, explain why that you are waiting on an urgent message, for example. So if you're trying to talk to someone and they just want to keep nervously staring at their phone, then they might not be interested in you. But uh, if they do it just every once in a while, but they, you know, made that apologize or just say, hey, I'm waiting on an urgent message and it, it's forgivable, no big deal. Okay, when someone fails to mirror you. People who are listening closely to what someone else is saying will often unconsciously mirror that person's body language. Use this technique consciously or unconsciously to let people know you really care about what they have to say. If someone is mirroring you, try... Uh, and you can try three different gestures to make sure, then you have it built rapport. And um, yeah, I see myself doing that sometimes. Uh, when I when I uh, maybe have a client come in, they want you know talk about getting back at their ex. You know, I'm like, okay, let's do this. You know, I kind of mirror their. You know, they like the motivation, but sometimes if they come in really sad because it's just the worst day of their life, they can't handle the stress from the divorce. You know, I, I kind of I take a more you know, sympathetic type approach. Okay, next one. When someone invades your personal space. We all have a different idea of how much buffer we need around ourselves to feel comfortable. So when you come close to someone, err on the side of giving that person a little extra room. Uh, that's just common sense. I think um, in the U.S. culture... We, we have this unwritten rule that we when we talk to people, we always try to keep two or three feet in between, sometimes a little bit more, even more after, you know, the whole social distancing thing. But, you know, I've been in uh, Europe before and there are people I hear it's really bad in Italy. They will get so close to your face when they're talking to you because there's no, none of that personal space stuff. And it's even worse with that bad breath. <laughs> so um, and also it makes just people uncomfortable. Um I mean, I know I like, especially if, you know, talk to women, you know, I don't want them to feel uncomfortable. I try to keep a good space, you know, um, men, I can get a little bit closer to because they know there's zero chance I'm hitting on them, you know, so I, uh, I don't have to worry about that, but, uh, I do just, maybe it's just a little, some conscious, subconscious thing I do is when I speak to women, I, I try to give them like an extra foot just so there's no, I want people to be able to talk to me and not be distracted by being nervous when they talk to me. Okay. Next one. When someone bites the earpiece of their glasses, this is a, this is when he or she is clearly concerned about something and subconsciously seeks to feel safe as an in infancy at the mother's breast, a pencil, a pen, a finger, a cigarette, or even a gum in a mouth can say this. So, um, 
if someone's telling me something really important, I'm, I'm deeply concerned. Uh, I, I, I guess I subconsciously seek to feel safe and go back to my infancy as a child. So I put my pen in my mouth, which me is like my primitive part of my brain thinking it's on my mother's breast. Okay. This is so weird, but, uh, yeah, you're putting something in your mouth. That means you are clearly concerned about what someone's telling you. So keep a, keep a pin nearby and stick it in your mouth and people will be very happy that you are give the appearance of being so, you know, very concerned. And, you know, I mean, I'm not telling you to coach. You need to be fake. Just, just be real. Next one, when someone strokes their chin, this is how a person tries to make a decision. In this case, his eyes can be turned up, down, sideways, anywhere. They hardly realize what they're considering at the moment as they're completely immersed in thought. And, you know, I do that too. I'm trying to make a decision about something like, you know, touch my chin. Okay, next one. When someone adjusts their tie, it's all very situational, but if a man does so in the company of a pretty woman, then probably he likes her. But the same gesture can mean that a person is uncomfortable. He lied or just wants to leave the society he is in. Next, the handshake. And this says a lot. And there's a few here. So they all have to do with the position of the left hand. That's the free hand. So we shake with our right hand. When you're shaking somebody's right hand, keep an eye on the left hand. That will tell you a lot. If the free hand or the left hand is placed on the back of the partner's hand, that shows that person can be trusted. Oh, I do that too. When I shake somebody's hand, I kind of use my left hand and kind of cover both hands. Just like, you know, it's okay. I'm going to take care of you. We got your back over here. That, that kind of, I want to build trust. Okay. Now if the free hand is placed on the top of the handshake, this testifies to empathy participation, but only if it was made at once. If the hands have already been linked for some time and then someone decided to put the second hand, it may indicate his desire to show who's boss. Oh God. Yeah. I, I see this, uh, and I do that uh, so much as a family law attorney. I get people going through custody, divorces, domestic violence. So I do that a lot. When I when I take their hand, I, I hold, you know, I shake their hand with my right hand, but I kind of hold it with my left hand to let them know that they are safe. Now, I, I guess um, if I'm dealing with an, a difficult opposing counsel, and he, he can be, you know, just as big of a jerk as I can be, and you know, okay. And we shake hands and then we like, after shaking hands, then you take your free hand and use it to cover both hands. That's like a subtle sign of show, trying to show the other person who's boss. Um, try not to get involved in silly little things like that. It's just dumb. Now the next one, the free hand is placed under the bottom, that's cupping the hand of the handshake. This shows a willingness to support or help. I don't really see this a lot, but okay. Now the next one is the free hand can also touch the partner's forearm, elbow, shoulder, etc. This is an invasion of personal space symbolizes the need for communication. And the closer this gesture to the body, the greater the need. And then, you know, I, I do that a lot. I tell our clients, okay, we shake hands. I kind of tap, hold their shoulder just for a second, let them know like, Hey, we're going to be in touch, you know, that kind of thing. Okay. A couple of notes here. These are all not hard and fast rules. Just because someone is crossing their arms doesn't always mean they are closed off or disinterested. Maybe they just had a, a COVID injection that day and it's sore. Or so, I don't know. Or maybe uh, they were playing sports and there's a sports injury. There could be a thousand and one reasons. Or they could simply be cold. The key is to find other indicators to confirm your suspicions because behaviors always come in clusters. So, okay, don't, if you see one type of body language, that's, don't always assume that's a completely indicative how, of how they are feeling. So, but if you can look at some other things and it all points to the same thing, now you, you have independent body languages all confirming the same thing. So, okay, you have something there now. Another note, when you talk to them, Establish a baseline. Just talk to them about nothing important, just to kind of get a, a a feel for their what their regular body behavior looks like. That call that the baseline, and then you start going into personal things, and then uh, you can start seeing the indicators. You might see one or two or three indicators, uh, whether it 
be in their body language itself or in their spoken language, uh, whatever. But go ahead and have talk with them early, establish a baseline, and then start poking and prodding, and then see what starts coming back at you. Because uh, if you don't, and you're not uh, looking at the body as a whole, you might accidentally make an unfounded conclusion, which can be get you know could be end up getting yourself into trouble. Also, keep in mind, um, I, I practice in the Houston area. Houston is a very diverse city. People from all over the world are here. So you have to take some of this with a grain of salt because body language has very different meanings in other cultures. So keep that in mind when dealing with people from other from different countries or even other parts of this country. Okay, I want to thank you for listening. Please consider subscribing.